ladies and gentlemen, today we have the honor of seeing the first quad slide new body style Prevo Liberty coach. And Frank, I know you've been monitoring the comments and there's a lot of questions you want to answer for the viewers out there. What is the story with this new quad slide? As you can see, we've got them starting to come out on a pretty regular basis now. We did, what, 901 just almost three weeks ago, and here we are getting into 902. So they're coming off in a pretty good rate right now, getting into the swing of the new dash and the new components as far as that goes. So this is the first 2024 Prevo 9660 quad slide that we have done. This has got the standard size slides in the bedroom. It has a very unique layout in the front of the coach. It's actually a very variation of an interior that we had done a number of years ago with some modifications to it, but it's the first time it's been done in a quad slide. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the first time the viewers have ever seen it as well. So we're pretty excited about that. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this new floor plan. We, I've got a lot of questions I want to ask you on behalf of the viewers, but I know you've been out with Liberty Coach at different RV resorts over the summer. What have you and the Liberty Coach team been up to lately? We were in Sturgis, where you and I had met originally at the Elkhorn Ridge Resort in Spearfish. And this past week, actually, we were at the St. Louis event for the Roadhogs, which was a very well attended rally. We're excited about that. We're going to be coming into the Liberty Coach Rally in Maine at Shore Hills in Booth Bay, which is next week. And then we're going to uh, Bowbridge. Louisiana for the Prevo Proud event. So we've been pretty busy throughout the time frame. That's no question. Yeah, and we've seen Big Red, the Liberty Coach service truck at a lot of different resorts out there. Now, what's the availability for Liberty Coach owners to get their coaches serviced at these different events? So what we do is we sponsor a number of different events throughout the year. So we sponsor at some of the RV resorts that are out there. We'll send service people there or we'll have Big Red won our tractor trailer. We were up in Petoskey, Michigan at the end of uh, July. We then again, we were out at, in Spearfish at Elkhorn Ridge. We attend the Roadhogs event. We attend the Bus and Biker events. And then we are at Mountain Falls. We uh, keep on the calendar on the events section of the website. So if people are going to be attending those different events, they can email service office at libertycoach.com with their uh, issues that they may be having. And then we can get them prioritized to get them handled there's certain things that can be done in the field and there's certain things that can't be done in the field and that'll all be communicated as far as that goes for people that are attending the events that have paid to be at the events the tractor trailer is there for them to be able to to walk up ask questions get service done and this is something that we've done you know way back when i was in high school so it's been part of our existence for sure and you personally attend all of these events for the most part for the most part i'm at every one of them i'm out about 26 weeks a year my wife and i denise at the different events that are out there to make sure we're in front of the people. A lot of value to that being an end user of the coach. You said there's a few new things on the outside of this coach that we could take a quick peek at and then let's take a look inside and I've got some questions I want to ask you as well. Absolutely. Cool. Now this being a quad slide coach, uh, how is this going to be different in the bays than a triple slide? So on the quad slide, the first bay is going to be very similar to what we've seen in the past where you have the pass through bay here. The second bay is a little bit different on the quad where it has the panel lever door here. What that did was is it allowed us to do the same TV arrangement that we do on our doubles and our triples. So we have a 65 inch unit down here in the second bay on the passenger side. This particular unit has a wine cooler. In the third bay here, instead of having the drawers, we have a refrigerator freezer unit that is both AC-DC that rolls out. So that was a customer request to do that. How do the customers design the bays? Does Liberty Coach give them options or they tell you what they want and you put it together or how does that work? You know, some of it has to do with this particular client as this is their third coach. The first coach they had of ours was a 13 quad which was the first quad slide that we had built. So there were some things that we had changed for them on that coach and they built a 2017. So some of the stuff followed. And then this 24 model, some of those things followed as well. And there may be some things that they see that a customer had us do and they saw it at a rally or they saw it, you know, in an event, whatever. And they took a picture and said, hey, listen, I want to do this on my next coach. So that's how some of that comes up because we know how they use the coach when they're building their new coach. We may make some suggestions that, hey, listen, this you know, you are out tailgating all 
all the time or you're at NASCAR and this, you know, there's a few things here and there that you might consider. So. Yes, sir. And we see all the custom drawers built around these coolers. That's all built by Liberty Coach. Everything you see here, we build in house. And the finish that we do, we've talked about the durability. I mean, you've done videos on coaches that are 25 and 30 years old and you can open them up and they look like they're brand new. And there's a reason for that. It's the way that it has been built. It's the way it's secured in place. It's meant to come out. It's not meant to be just nailed down and never to come out again, which is where you see the issues on other coaches because they're not made to be serviced very easily. So when you start taking things apart, they never want to go back together the same way. Things move over time. The way we build things, they're made to come in and out as needed. A lot of people are calling me out that I say this is the nicest or the best or most expensive. Now, where do you say that Liberty Coach compares in the motor coach world, arguably the highest quality, finest motor coach in the world? How do you rate towards others and what's different about Liberty Coach? Well, I'm an owner, user of the coach. I see how the coach comes together. I'm up at the factory at least once a month, watching how things are coming together, being with customers when they're picking stuff out. When you see how we put everything together, the amount of time that's done, even though we have machinery that does some of the work, the amount of hands-on that has to be done to complete what my brother has designed as far as in the dashes, the caps, the cabinetry, and what Kim puts together on an interior, as far as I'm concerned, we're untouchable. Yes, sir, and the only one in the industry, automotive, RV, marine, that I know of with a lifetime workmanship warranty to the original owner of the coach, is that still something you're standing behind? Absolutely, we have a lifetime workmanship warranty on what we build. I use it all the time. If we have a fresh water tank, which is stainless steel that we manufacture, if 10 years down the road it starts leaking, that's our problem. And if it's his first owner, we're going to fix it or we're going to replace it. Depending on the severity of it, we will take care of it. The squeaks and rattles, we do the same. Sometimes I will go ahead and I will transfer that to another owner. If we happen to get a coach back within a year, most of the time we will do that because we know the owner, we know how the coach has been taken care of. It probably has very little mileage on it. So that's a bonus to that next customer as well. Yes, sir, the only one in the industry that can say that. So I have a lot of respect for that. Liberty Coach only builds, what, a dozen or so coaches a year? How many yeah, coaches we total? Try and get into that 14 per year range. This year we'll be down a little bit because of so much of the new equipment for the 9660 that was developed over the past two years coming together so that has slowed things up a little bit but we're starting to get everything back with a decent flow so we'll be back up into that production next year for sure and if someone was to custom order a new liberty coach today when would they expect to take delivery uh, we're looking at january right now of 25. so you're still a year and a half out or so now is there a reason that you don't ramp it up and start building you know 15 or 18 or 20 coaches a year with that much demand a lot of it has to do with the labor pool that's out there to be able to ramp up like that to get people trained to be at the level that we are it would take a couple of years to get to that point and how many people would you end up moving through to get to that team level to be able to do that it takes a long time to make that happen and then we don't want to sacrifice quality that we have either at the same token if we can stay in that 14-ish, maybe one or two more, depending on customization, because when somebody just says that, hey, this is really cool, but we want to make a modification, as you can see in this coach was done, it's not just, okay, well, what we used to build doesn't go in there, and what we're gonna build now goes in, and it's easy. There is a lot of complex pieces and parts that have to be changed to make that happen. It just doesn't a, a plug and play, you know, copy and paste deal. So that adds time as well. Something that you look at would just be a cabinet change could end up changing production by three weeks and then you can't recoup that. Those are the reason that we, you know, have that look at, okay, this is how many coaches we believe we're going to be able to accomplish and keeping a pad in there for that type of work. Well, and to make sure you can warranty squeaks and rattles. You don't want to ramp exactly. it up. Yes, sir. Exactly. Fresh water tank, water heater. We do use a standalone water heater. It's 40 gallons. It's electric. It's also heated from the main engine. One thing that people don't realize is when you use the units that are, say, like an aqua hot or something similar to that, a lot of times the water flow has to be slowed down going through there so that the water can heat up. So when it exits, it's hot when it gets to your faucet. So the volume of water that's coming out of there is not what you're used to in your home. 
this is going to be what you're used to in your home. So on top of that, you have a 40 gallon capacity of hot water. So add that to the capacity of your fresh water tank of approximately 170 gallons, you have another 40 gallons sitting here as well. There's a lot of positive to this, plus it's heated from the main engine when you're driving down the road as well, so you always have hot water. You're not dependent on another source to make hot water. One of the other questions I saw uh, was, uh, is there a fire suppression system on this coach? So Prevo came to the industry with, I believe, the first fire suppression system, and it was done in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. And that system actually has a fuse arrangement that runs just above this fender well, goes all the way through the engine compartment, through their service compartment as well, back around to the same position on the other side. So when that fuse melts, it automatically throws the fire suppression system off and extinguishes anything that would happen. So that's been a part of every coach that we have built since that's been available. So is that an option from Prevo it then or standard? It used to be an option. I believe it is a standard piece now. Folks were also asking about emergency egress doors. I'll ask you more about that when we go yep. inside of the coach. Yeah, now the exterior, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback. Great looking rear cap here, all brand new for the new body style. But what else is new about the rear end here? Well, we can start back on the rear cap. I mean, the rear cap, Prevo had done some changes. You can see these uh, fairings, if you want to call them that, off to the side here to reduce the drag on the coach, okay? So that transitioned up toward the roof line as well. So that when Kurt made the new caps, designed the new caps to go front and rear, they had to transition with that. Then added to reducing the drag back here. So what you'll notice is over time, this back end of the coach will not get as dirty because it's not sucking up everything going down the road behind it, less drag better fuel economy. Now there's something else regarding this on the top. This system sits on the roof of the coach and then Prevo provides you a chimney for the exhaust that goes through the roof. A lot of the people out there, a lot of our competitors just stick that on there and they're done. You can go on the roof and you can walk up there and you can see that. We don't do that. The way Kurt designed that, there's a full chimney system that's built into our roof cap and then we have a very nice stainless cover for that so that water doesn't come in, it's drained, what have you, to make sure that the system is extremely finished like it's supposed to. Plus the fact of the way it's designed, the wind coming down does not get trapped back there causing issues, drag, what have you as well. So there's a lot to be said with that. The rest of the coach on the 9660 back in here, this part is pretty similar to what we had in the past. Engine area, I can open the uh, compartment up here. Typically we have the stainless steel belt guard that's here. This client decided not to keep it on there. We do have the mounting bracket still in place in case at some point in time it does go back on. This area here is on an air belt tightening system which keeps the belts at a constant tension all the time. So the system is made to run thousands of miles, millions of miles if you will, and keep maintaining belt tensioning. Obviously, you're not gonna run the same belts for millions of miles, but the purpose of this is to make sure that you're not having to be concerned about coming back here all the time to make sure your belts are tight because they're always gonna be at a constant tension. Uh, they definitely have it set up to keep these buses going down the road, a Absolutely. lot of value in that. Absolutely. This then is the Volvo 500 horse D13. There's 1,850 foot-pounds of torque on this engine, and then we use the Allison six-speed transmission. We have two alternators here for the house system. System. This has to do with the Volta 58 volt system. Those alternators are 10,000 kW each, so we can charge that energy pack back up to 100% of charge within two and a half hours of it being from 25% of charge. We can get it up to 100% of charge within two and a half hours of driving. So the coach is set up really well for dry camping. In fact, I don't believe there's another coach at this level that can sit dry camp as long as a Liberty coach with the lithium ion Volta package that we have. Once you get to 100% state of charge with those lithium batteries, how many AC units can you run for how long when you're dry camping? When you're dry camping, for an example, if you run one, you can run about 16 hours. And there's a number of other pieces of equipment that are running at the same time, right? You've got TVs, you've got lights, you've got the electronics that are running in the background 
of all of this that's running on the inverter system as well, which is depleting on the batteries also. If you go to two air conditioners, you're probably looking at about eight hours. Now, all of this is dependent on what the exterior temperature is as well. You know, it's going to be different if it's 75 degrees outside than it is 105 degrees outside, right? So there's, there's differences that have to be looked at with that. The system does a great job. It's been doing a great job for us since Coach 806. This is Coach now 902. So, you know, we're getting close to 100 units out there with this system going, and it's been pretty bulletproof. Yes, sir, and it's great to be able to run those ACs without creating noise pollution or the fumes from the generator or the engine. But if you did run those batteries down while dry camping and needed to recharge them, you could fire up the generator or the engine and recharge those batteries. Right. We have the automatic system that starts the generator. So we're going to look at about seven and a half hours. You can change the charge rate on that as well to take longer, take less time, whatever you want to do to you have the variability to do this. If it's set at its normal position, you're gonna be looking at about seven and a half hours to charge those batteries all the way up. Now, the other nice thing about it is, compared to other stuff that's out there, because we have so much battery capacity, so much power built into this system, you can run three roof airs going down the road without running the generator. You could run all four, but we have it set up that you can run any three of the four units. You can, combination, you can run down the road without the generator because we have plenty of power back here to keep those batteries up. Another Dean Laux Artist Series, an extremely expensive option, really ties together with the new body style. Was there anything specific in this paint scheme that inspired it? I think that they wanted to kind of tie in their last coach, the trade-in on this coach, 2017 is a quad as well. The paint is color-wise somewhat similar, so it's a great trade-in that we've got coming with that. So this paint scheme, paint design, what have you, I think was put together basically from that as a basis with Dean. Uh, their last coach was not an artist series, this one is. And there's some other options that they did with it. They blacked out the tail lights, they painted through the door handles, so there's a lot of treatment through the windows and going forward as well. It's really well done, spectacular. Yeah, great looking coach. And talking about the 17 quad slide, uh, is that coach available? Absolutely. Was that an original? Was that a one owner? One owner coach. And these folks take meticulous care of their coaches, so that's a great opportunity yes. for someone. And I'm noticing a few more coaches out front. Finally, mm. the last several times we've been here, there's like no coaches, yeah. but. We've got 10 units in inventory right now. Uh, we've got a couple of them that are sold, but we've got some other stuff that's going to be coming in as well. Again, because we're getting into a rhythm now, coming into the 9660 chassis coming off, there's some great trade-ins that are coming in with those also. So you need to keep monitoring the website, libertycoach.com. Yes, sir, and I know the newer Liberties are pushing on about 2.9 million, I believe. Do you know roughly what the asking price will be of that 2017 quad slide? Uh, you're probably gonna be in the area of about 1.9, just short of 2 million. Yeah, a lot of value there. Going back to this coach, we were talking about dry camping. What is the holding tank, fresh and waste tank capacity on this coach? Fresh, you're looking around 170-ish. You've got about the same on the holding tank capacity as well. But we also have a gray water bypass. So there's some areas because our holding tank is one tank, black and gray in one tank. There's reasons we've done that for so many years is because of the fact that in some areas you have the ability to bypass the gray water into a drain or you can bypass it onto the ground if it's allowed in the area you're at so then your holding tank is then specific for black capacity only that gives you a lot of different options and a lot of ability to stay longer in an area especially if you can get fresh water then you have that much more capacity for black also the reason that we've done that is because gray water mixed with the black water tends to keep that tank cleaner and it also tends to keep any fumes down inside the coach also we do a lot of venting we don't have a sewer gas if you will problem that comes up into our coach but 
one of the nice things about having that is it does keep that tank cleaner. Normally we see plastic holding tanks. Do you use just no. normal plastic tanks or? No, we use stainless steel for the fresh water tank and we use aluminum from the holding tank. That goes back to serviceability and warranty from years and years ago. There's too much trouble that you can run into on the plastic and the poly tanks, if you will, because if somebody tightens a fitting down too far, it may crack internally and you don't see that for a, you know two, three years down the road and all of a sudden the thing starts leaking uh, regarding the fresh water tank. We use stainless steel because it's the same way that your milk is delivered in a truck. It's in a stainless steel right tanker. You don't get the taste and odor problems in a stainless tank that you get in a poly or fiberglass tank over a period of time. 173 gallon stainless steel holding tank, that can't be cheap. It's half the price of the coach. <laughs> <laughs> in conjunction with the hardware that goes into the coach is the time. The amount of man hours that we put into a coach is significantly more than anybody else in the industry, bar none. There's other companies that can say, well, we do. They may put the slides in themselves, okay? We don't. We buy the coach with the slides already installed. So you take that out of the equation, we have more man hours on the interior than anybody else in the industry does. There's a lot of quality that goes into that, but then that also adds up. So. You can take those hourly rates, you got to add a number of things to them, you know, multiplying that times two, three, four thousand man hours, it doesn't take long to come up to some big numbers. Well, and more man hours on the exterior than anyone else. Yeah. I know Dean and right. his team sure. put some serious yeah. hours I into mean, these. Yeah, that, that, that's a big check at the end of the day, there's no question. Fourth bay driver's side, we've got the stainless steel fresh water tank, we've got a stainless steel cover over the holding tank, our water hose is a 100 foot electric retractable hose. You pull it out manually down through the floor. Cord reel, the shore power is 75 feet. It's on an electric reel as well. You have the ability to plug the coach in on both sides. You have the ability to dump the holding tank on both sides. You can fill the fresh water tank from both sides. So you have that option available to you. Just like fuel, you can fuel the coach on both sides. Here or the other side, def is done only here, and we have locking covers for those areas. And what's the fuel capacity? 200 gallons. Yes, sir. Client has started to move some of their stuff into the coach, so we've got a great storage capacity here. Sometimes you'll see a closet here, or we do the bins. Every Liberty coach comes with a ladder. That's something that, you know, people go, okay, how are we gonna get on the roof? We provide a ladder for each customer. It's an expandable, expensive ladder. We also have in here the 12 and a half kW generator. It's in its own quiet box, plus we make it our own box around it, fully ventilated as well, and quietest that there is in the industry. And there's probably a lot of extremely low hour 12.5 uh, generators Many. in these pre-owned Liberty coaches. Many. With and, the lithium system. Right, with the lithium system, people find that they're not using the generator very often. We have three 5,000 watt inverters that are tied into this lithium ion system. So you have the ability to stack two of them together as well. So you can run the oven, you can run the washer dryer, those type of things that are 220 activated or 220 powered. You can run those off those inverters as well through the battery system. And then we have one inverter that stays on inverter mode all the time and it's purpose in life is to run all the sensitive equipment. So your satellite receivers, your TVs, uh, your remote control systems, which we use Crestron, uh, all of that stuff stays live all the time. And the water pump, the refrigerator, those type of things like life in a constant power and don't like being turned over, you know, from generator short inverter. So that's a bonus that we have on our side as well. We build our own transfer switch box here, the stainless steel one, where all the contactors are for switching between generator shore and inverter power. We have bypasses for those as well. If you have an inverter failure, you can bypass that unit onto another one. So you're not dead in the water, if you will. The battery management system here, the Volta system, which is the gray box on top. One thing that we've pointed out a few different times is the ability to turn the coach off. I had a coach that going out to Sturgis this year that we had a cracked injector tip and we had to put the coach in, we had to have it towed, we had to put it into a full service facility there in, in Rapid City, we had to turn the coach off. So we came in here, hit the silver button with the green circle on it, press that button, turn the coach totally off. So when we came back to it a week later, all we do is press the button, everything comes back up live, 
We were at 100% state of charge when we turned it off. We actually were at almost 100% state of charge when we turned it back on. This also means that everything that's turning back on has a nice clean reboot because it's got all the power that it needs. It's not you know, turning on and turning off because the batteries are just barely there, right? They are not very happy when that happened. You can actually essentially leave the coach in that shutdown mode for months at a time if you didn't have the ability to plug the coach in in storage. Yes, sir. And I don't know anybody else that's using triple 5,000 watt inverters. How long has Liberty Coach been doing that? We're getting past our, our second year into that. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we were at the Hershey show recently and we're starting to see uh, production motorhomes put a lithium battery package on it that's not very expensive, but they don't list, you know, how what the inverters are. And I started sniffing around to see, you know, what hardware there was. And there was coaches in the million dollar range with like 2,800 and 3,000 watt inverters. So uh, definitely a lot of value in that. Just because someone has lithium batteries doesn't mean they have all of the hardware to back that up. I know the cost of all this is extremely expensive. Uh, I've heard up in the 80 to $90,000 range. There's so different levels of lithium ion technology. So you're starting to see more and more companies that are out there that, okay, we, we have a lithium ion package here that you can just switch out your current battery system and put this in. Okay, that's not really the case. Certain lithium ion product is not gonna have the lasting capabilities that this system has. There's actually five different levels of lithium ion. We have the energy of basically half of what they put in, the Tesla. And the level of what we have here is the next step. And then looking at how the lithium technology works, it's completely different than a lead acid or a gel battery or an AGM battery for that matter. They're deplete more on a diagonal. Lithium ion runs flat and then essentially falls off the cliff. So when you're doing these automatic starting systems for the generator, if you're basing it on voltage, you can't catch it when it fell off the cliff, right? You have to do it on SOC or state of charge. So if you're just gonna make this change out, there's a whole different mindset here of how the system has to go together, how, it, how it's wired, how all these different systems have to work together. And if they don't, don't go the whole nine yards, you're not gonna be very happy with it. You're not gonna get the benefit. And Liberty Coach has been using lithium technology for over a decade now? Oh yeah, we're 14 years. Yes, sir, and leading the industry. I'm sure you've learned a lot over that 14 years. So. A, lot, a lot was learned. First bay here, of course, pass through bay. You've got the awning chairs are mounted on the back side of the doors. New also on the 9660 is our new hub covers. Gravity based on the hub covers. Like a Rolls Just Royce. Like a Rolls, Rolls Royce, buddy. Y yes, sir, the Rolls Royce of motor coaches exactly for right. sure. Exactly yeah. Exactly right. The 9660 then changed the service door, used to be here. On the previous coaches, on the Classic, now we have a nice big door to get in for service. Uh, a lot of the changes that were done on the 9660 were mainly for the tour industry. Easier serviceability, okay? So now we have easier serviceability to get to the electronics that the coach runs on, the different pieces of equipment that are down in here, the washer fluids, that type of thing. So we have a new area here, which they call the frunk, if you will. This allows you to be able to get into filters for the dash air conditioning system, the windshield wiper motors. There was quite a bit of, uh, done here because previously the windshield wiper motors where there was one motor and the arms were tied together with a tie rod. If one went down, obviously you had a problem. Now we have synchronous motors. We have multiple settings for delay, a mist position as well for one time of run, more clearance, if you will, for clearing the windshield, also less noise. The classic units, sometimes depending on the wind coming across the coach, you could hear the wind go past the wipers. Uh, that no longer happens here. The other thing that's really cool about the way that this front end was done is it was done for the purpose of keeping the front of the coach clear. On the classic models, we would have the headlight washer system. We no longer have that on the 9660. That's because of the fact that in a lot of the testing that they did in the wind tunnels and actual driving, snow and ice and water would actually clear itself because of the design. So when Kurt manufactured and designed the new front end grill treatment here that we have, that had to be working with that 
to make sure it didn't upset that system. Definitely really dressed up the look of the new 9660 shell. I love what Liberty Coach added here. And then this is also a backlit yeah, this Liberty is Coach. Yeah, backlit here as well. And then we have the whole front cap that Kurt designed to make sure that all of this that Prevo did did not upset the drag and enhance the fuel economy of the coach. The other thing that was changed on the 9660 is the bumper is now three pieces. So as opposed to before, if you were to damage damage the bumper, you had to have a whole new bumper cover, right? So now you have three individual pieces that can be done as opposed to a single piece. And we still have the storage behind the front bumper as well. This drops down. Our air compressor is located here as well as sealed storage behind. I had a chance to interview Francois, the president of Prevo. He was talking about the aerodynamics of the front end, and I believe there's better fuel efficiency. Mm -hmm. I heard somewhere around 12%. Do you know if there's any numbers? There's numbers that they have projected, I'm sure, in modeling as far as using stuff, but you know, until we really get out there and put some miles on the coaches and see what they've actually done done it's going to be interesting to see for sure I, there's no question it's going to be better i'm looking forward to seeing the new floor plan yeah. here uh, can we take a look inside we better yeah yes sir <laughs> <laughs> Now this is totally different than we've ever seen this area of the coach right here. Unlike any motorhome out there, what is going on here, sir? So this was a specific client request because of how they use the coach. Again, this is their third Liberty coach. The first one they bought was one that we had in inventory. The second one was done based upon a floor plan that we'd already been doing. So they custom built uh, their desires inside that. And then after using that coach, that was a 2017. So now going from 2016, obviously from you know how our year models are done up until they ordered this coach in 2022 so we're looking at six years this is what they came up with as far as what they wanted to do so this is really cool here the way that this is all set up this is a desk arrangement works really well um, lots of storage here that we have printers what have you that we can use uh, plus we still have the dinette tv arrangement here which can be used as a monitor as well so you could do a laptop stored underneath and use this as a monitor so workability wise this works really well for them as opposed to having the dinette with the bar top or the face-to-face -face booth or you know what are the different arrangements that we've had typically in the quad we've had the single chair uh, with the desk arrangement cabinet here, they wanted to have more entertaining availability to them. So we did the two chairs here in the front. And then we have the couch, the galley. We were able to gain some more galley countertop by coming back into the fixed portion, if you will, of the shell. We've got this section of the galley is on the slide room. So there's still some decent uh, storage space above for upper cabinetry and lower cabinetry. And then the oven moved back here and the refrigerator further back. So this whole area gives a much larger feel, especially with the 9660 chassis and the way that Kurt designed the front of the coach. We no longer have that step down arrangement. So now the whole soffiting and everything and all the lighting moves all the way to the front part of the cap of the coach, which makes the whole area feel essentially four feet longer. And behind you, I'm noticing that backlit yeah. countertop, your sister-in-law and the way she does these interior designs, it's just incredible. And yeah. and this is a, just a completely different vibe and style than we've seen. Do you know what the inspiration was? They have a farm, I believe it's in uh, Pennsylvania area. Uh, this is more of a country feel, I guess you could say, chic if you want to call it that. Yeah, I mean, very, very you know, warm. So, yeah, more it, it is. And I think that's where some of that came from. Uh, the backlit agate panels eliminates the need for a window per se you got a lot of light that comes here uh, from those panels makes it a feel larger as well it's a really cool operation you know there's significant space for storage drawers you know everywhere so there's a lot of storage in this galley as well and just so much lighting all of you know the indirect lighting below the countertops and in the ceiling yep. do you know how many lights is in a liberty coach the last th time i remember counting as far as the these led down lights i think there's close to 40 wow. in the coach so we have a significant amount of lighting in the coach they're dimmable as well and then of course we also have the indirect lighting that's around the windows now you don't have the individual spots like they had for so many years to give you a, a straight line beam look to it as 
well as the uh, softening areas as well. The wood floors are very high end, really go with that country theme. Are these heated floors? Yes. 100% heated everywhere. Even this drop down section of the slide here on the passenger side is heated as well and all the way back through the bedroom. What about the step up in the office area? We did do a small section here for that. Very cool. Back up at the cockpit, I know your brother explained that in 901. So the cockpit arrangement on the new 9660 was completely changed when Kurt did all the time and effort and design to do this. There was a significant amount of changes that were made. A steering wheel, for an example, they came out with a new steering wheel. Kurt designed a new cover for that steering wheel as well. The whole dash bonnet type, everything about this dash is different other than the display as it comes from Prevo. The glass display is all colored now, where it was monochromatic before. We now have a 10 inch screen here for the Pioneer radio. So we have the ability to keep your phone in a clamping arrangement here charging, and then you can airplay over to here. So you have full hands free for your phone. As far as answering the calls, making calls, you can airplay over here for your navigation as well. We do have people that have gone from the center pillar monitor here to a, a Garmin display. 10 inch Garmin can be done here also. This coach has the option of the E mirrors, so we don't have the exterior mirrors on the coach, so we don't have the wind noise of those mirrors or the shake of those mirrors any longer. So the E mirrors are displayed here and here. You have a blind spot section as well as the uh, longer vision section. They're delineated as soon as you turn a turn signal on or you have the coach in reverse and the hazards are on. You'll see lines that mark off where your drive axle is so it's safe to turn. Another line shows you where the rear bumper is and then there's a green line that tells you you're safe to pull in from passing. The leveling system changed as well. Prevo changed on the suspension system. Previously you only had the ability to level the driver's side rear, the passenger side rear, and the front by itself. Now all four positions have their own valves. So you have more versatility in your leveling also. That has been a, a big enhancement. Controls on the steering wheel, there's multiple controls that you have. Switches we added. Kurt redesign this switch panel here. We have the ability for more switches should we want to add any more options to it. Air flow for the air conditioning has changed significantly from the past coaches to where it's actually blowing now at your face as opposed to down here at your legs. Those vents are still there as well. And then we have more air movement to the passenger here also. Glove box area here that Kurt did also. Nice. Entry door. There's a significant amount of changes that were done in here. The other part is these parts here, which is our blind spot detection system, which we still use, and we have exclusively since the uh, 2021 model year. These have been moved as well, and they're in a 3D printed housing. So you've got the passenger side here on the center windshield post and the driver's side on the driver windshield post. Another factor that changed that was a question that came up on the last video, we still do have the drop-down TV. Because of the change in the front end here, that TV motor assembly now has a larger angle to it, so it is not at all in your way when you're coming in and out of the coach when it's in the down position. We also have cabinets here for storage on either side. When we were outside, I could see the indirect lighting. I mm -hmm. cannot see it from here, but there is some lighting. Right, so there is indirect lighting as far as what we would call the entry light. When you hit the entry light button, this will come on. There's also, in our traditional coaches, people would always ask what that light was that was here. We would consider that a map light. It was red in color. So we now have an LED strip here that is red on both sides. So that is enhanced also. So there's a significant amount of changes that were done, obviously here on the front end. A lot of folks have asked about the split windshield as well. What's the reason for having the two windshields instead of a one piece? Going back to Prevo as far as, you know, how many millions of miles that the coaches have driven down the road, and even as many miles as we drive down the road, invariably you're gonna get a rock chip, you're gonna get a heavy hit, and it's a heck of a lot easier to deal with if you've got one windshield on one side to deal with, then you have to replace the whole front of the coach. The other part is, is that a lot of people don't realize when we get these windshields in or when they're transported across country, they don't always come in in one piece, okay? They're broken. To be able to have a windshield moved cross country or to wherever it needs to go to be installed into your coach is problematic, number one, and on its own. Number two is 
there's not that many shops out there that are going to be able to replace a single windshield. And over time, some, not all, but over time, you see these windshields are so heavy as they settle, then they begin to leak at the top. If the gaskets aren't set properly, you know, there's a number of things and factors that can happen with that. The other part that has to do with the interior of conversion of what we do, when you look at the complex structure of the front of this coach, there's a lot of radiuses going on. To be able to make a single privacy shade to come down on a single windshield is extremely difficult without it coming into the coach. So now you're egress and you know getting in and out and how do you keep that thing straight coming down you know your windshield posts are going to have to get larger to be able to carry that there's there's a lot of complex issues that are going on here it's not just a flat windshield that you can drop down flat similar to what you can on the side yeah you end up seeing little lights oh, kind of yeah. peeking in the corners and then i know the cost of a one-piece windshield is much more expensive and then i would assume that because prevo has so many buses and mm -hmm. tour buses running around that the availability of these windshields is probably a little bit more than the the custom no, one no pieces question. There's no question it is. It's a lot easier to get a hold of that than they're in all over the country. You know, obviously Prevo has the many different service locations throughout the country as well. So we have, you know, parts availability with that too. And, and so many cool little details yeah. that Liberty Coach does, like the Ottoman system here with the tabletop here. Mm -hmm. How long has Liberty Coach been doing that? We've been making that now for, oh gosh, probably five plus years, I suppose. So, you know, you have a table here. If you remove that, then you have two Ottomans that you can, you know, move around. So there's quite a bit of versatility there. And that's all built in-house by Liberty mm -hmm. Coach. Yep, we build that all in-house. This couch also then is a convertible mattress. So this is going to be then the ability to have essentially a queen-size bed. It's got an air mattress once it all folds out. So you've got a lot more uh, versatility here as well. Being a quad slide, what's uh, some of the biggest advantages of a quad slide? Your main advantage that you have is airspace. You've got more volume in the coach when it's opened up. So that's your main advantage that you have. Prevo and the way they designed the shell, we didn't lose any base space by doing that either, which everybody else typically, when you do that, they take it out of the base. Prevo was able to do that as well as with this flat floor that we essentially lost no height in the base by doing that. Now outside we were talking about all of the equipment with the lithium battery system and a lot of folks have been asking about solar. Is there solar on this coach to help with that? You know, you can, there's some areas, but we don't have a lot of real estate at the end of the day for the solar panels in their current efficiency. I guess is probably the best way to look at it. The awnings when they're on the top of the coach, then you got the air conditioning systems that are there, the satellite systems, then you start looking at availability of real estate for the Starlink systems. When all this stuff is put on the roof of the coach, now we're losing a lot of real estate for solar panels that would really get us the energy that we would need to offset what's coming out. So that's difficult in today's world. When maybe we can get some awning systems where you know they can go out and have thinner materials to be able to do that and still have a, a real good performing awning system, which is difficult now as it is. So there, it's that's a challenge. Well, and I would assume that the majority of these brand new Liberty coaches and even late model Liberty coaches are, are stored indoors mm -hmm. in a climate controlled facility. Normally mm -hmm. clients at this level keep everything indoors. Keep Pretty much. Clean. Plug so, in indoors, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. And then when it's out running on the road, it's either charging off of the engine or the exactly. you know, generators. So that exactly. makes sense. As we talk about, they're on generator systems and what have you. And if they've got an issue or they've got questions, you know, the best way to, to roll into our service network is to email service office at libertycoach.com. Everybody gets covered on that through that procedure. I get that email as well as our other service technicians and service managers that are out there that, so that we can track what we're asked to do or we can track communication with customers to make sure that we're on top of our game. Talking about service, I hear over and over from Liberty Coach owners, the level that they receive is just second to none. I know a Frank, good Liberty Coach owner, recently did a video talking about you know being in downtown Chicago and having an issue, but you and the Liberty Coach team were there to kind of hold his hand, walk him through that with ease, uh, and he was able to get through that situation very easily. 
easily. So a lot of value to that. It's like I've said, I don't care if the motor falls out of the coach. It says Liberty Coach on the front of it. We want to be that first phone call or that first step. And again, we're looking at you know more and more electronically with the email so that there's so many more people that are covered on it. So there's more chances that somebody's going to be reacting immediately. Yeah, definitely. And it's good to just have a log, have everything logged. I definitely respect that. And I've got to ask, 50 years, have you ever had a motor fall out of a coach? No. No, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Coming through the hallway, nice uh, pantry area. This is all on rollouts. I have the washer dryer here, the Bosch unit, Wolf speed oven here which is microwave as well as regular convection oven. This can be a closet or pantry as well. Trash drawer here. We've got the inductive cooktop. Fisher Paykel refrigerator freezer unit. Again, built in. You don't even really know you have a refrigerator here. Mid toilet room, which has the front and rear entry. The Chevron doors, these are all, as we noted, on a lot of coaches, all solid. Here in the half bath, Great looking tile arrangement here and also is carried through behind the toilet wall as well. We've got an air door here to close off the uh, hallway down for the front of the back of the coach. So you got another closet here in the hallway with the hamper below it. So again, lots of closet storage area in the coach. And that door is the Chevron or... Um... Right, the Chevron as well. And then as we enter into the bedroom, king size bed. Uh, one question that comes up sometimes, is there any storage underneath the bed? The way that this framework is done for the slide room, the bed frame is actually part of the slide itself. So there's no storage underneath here. We do have some electronics underneath there. And at the foot of the bed, we have a safe, rather large safe at the foot of the bed. So, you know, we do utilize all the space that we can have these nightstand if you want to call them that on either side of the bed we have flat charging ports here and in the back we have towers that pull up which are outlets and usb outlets as well nice 50 inch tv mounted here we did talk about comment that had come up as far as egress there are four opening windows on the coach there's one on each side here in the bedroom there's one on each side in the front those are emergency exits. And we build the headboard back here so that it is removable easy so that you can get out that window also. Something that some other people don't think about too often. But with those awning style windows, the screen pops and then there's a lever to hit and then the whole window will then open up freely. So it goes beyond that mechanical stop. But you can also open them up just to get fresh air Certainly. as well. We have quite a bit of storage on either side of the TV. Nice drawer storage down here as well, deep drawers. Nice big vanity arrangement here, a lot of storage underneath the vanity. Drawers, who does drawers at a vanity any longer, right? So there's drawers on either side of the vanity, a lot of lighting. This is one thing that we've done a lot of work with in the past four to five years is to bring out more and more lighting in the back of the coach or in the bathrooms of the coach so people can see what's going on. We're not getting any younger. Big shower, I can get in here Big people, tall like you as well, Andrew, we can get in the shower. There's a lot of hooks in here the client wanted for towels and what have you. A lot of good area in here. One thing that we point out all the time in our shower is that the shower pan is stainless steel. When you come into our shop up north, you'll see these. We make them in-house. It is a stainless steel pan that is set on the floor. Then the rock board goes around it and then the tile goes on it so there's no way for water to get out of the shower we see this on coaches that are much older non-liberty coach product that you can walk into it and you can smell that there's some kind of a water issue going on nine times out of the ten it's going to be the showers in those coaches that does not happen on a liberty coach this arrangement here does not have the aft bath or the aft toilet so we have a bigger vanity here we also then have closet across the back of the coach additional drawer storage as well. So the coach has a significant amount of storage in it. Frank, I know you're extremely busy. Your time is very valuable. So thank you very much for showing us around this new 2024 quad slide. Now, if someone is a serious and qualified buyer and want to order a new Liberty coach or purchase some of the pre-owned inventory here, who can they get a hold of? Well, they're going to go ahead and get into the email of coach sales at libertycoach.com. They can also call 800-554-9877. They can also monitor the website and they can email directly off the website 
on a particular unit. All of those emails come to me directly and then I send them out to the different salespeople or I'll answer them myself. So, you know, there's always the way to be able to get a hold of us. We also have the other company that we have here, the Motorhome Exchange, which Dave Wall runs that. And you can go on to their website, themotorhomeexchange.com, and you can see the other inventory that we have, which is going to be outside of 10 years production of Liberty Coach or other Prevo conversions that we have in stock. We're real deep here in our sales and service. I greatly appreciate your time. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Also, thanks to all of you subscribing to the channel. We hope you're all having a great day. Thank you all as well. See you next time.